Yes, sir, Mr. Huddleston. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I was not trying to interrupt you. I was going to let you finish, and I'm going to try to do the request. So whatever you were saying, if you could finish that, and then I'd like to have a couple minutes with you all if I could. Absolutely. And ironically, I abs- I actually did just finish. So, <laughs> so I, I, I've enjoyed again today listening to everybody. And since you made a change in the title, I, I want to kind of like touch on all three of those things. Uh, women in trading, uh, losing and or losing streaks, and the uh, mental health and the management thereof. Uh, mo- <laughs> what most people don't realize is, you know, I have like a locker room of gentlemen that want to get out here and like prove to the world that they themselves and what they have learned is an amazing new skill set. And it is. And the quiet females that are actually better traders in my fold, they're not interested in doing any of that. Now, I'm not trying to say that the ladies in this community that are outspoken, which I'm so impressed with, I I love the candor, I love the ability for them to articulate and communicate their place. Okay, they're not in a position where they're asking to be a part of this community, a part of this industry. They're just stepping in, just like a strong woman would. And my better students, my best student is a woman. And while teaching and training her, one of the things that was quickly apparent is when she would make a mistake, she was never, ever talking to me in a tone where she was very judgmental of herself. She would ask me, this is, you know, this is what I did. What should I be observing in this? And how should I think about it? And how do I go forward so I don't repeat that? The choice of words, the, the terms that she used to nail down the core issue was never judgmental. It was never self-reflecting in a negative tone. She was open always for the reinforcement from me as her educator. And she trusted the fact that what I was going to tell her was sufficient. In all of the time as an educator, even back in the 90s when I wasn't really equipped to be teaching, I was teaching ahead of schedule. But even then, the gentlemen that I have trained whether they're the successful ones that you've seen recently or the ones that are quiet and haven't really found themselves yet, they have this characteristic that repeats among all of them. They take every minor setback as a major defeat. You would think that these guys have trained for the NFL Super Bowl, okay? They've worked very, very hard, and it's all on the line now. They got to get this trophy. It, it, this is it. This is the time. This is the trading opportunity. This week coming, some of you gentlemen are thinking that's exactly what it's going to be like for you. And the ladies in my fold, my best student, she doesn't think like that. She knows that she has models, not one model. She has models. She knows that one of them will speak to her every single trading session. How does she get to that point where she can trust not only that it will repeat, but she doesn't fear losing. She has losing trades, very few of them. But why is she confident? Because she's done a lot of work before making money. She's kept herself away from judgmental criticism from everyone else while she was very influenced by the opinions of others in our community, my community, the, the, the community that was behind a paywall. She didn't want to, and she still doesn't talk. She doesn't make herself known. She's never brought herself out in a position where she can be judged. Apart from my criticism about what it is she did, either incorrectly or correctly. And I've been very careful to guard that responsibility that she's given me and trust. The gentlemen, they want to be hard on themselves because they think it's like 
high school football and a coach needs to put it in her ass and say, hey, you screwed that up. Do some laps. No. You don't defeat yourself even further when you make a mistake. If you fail a funded account challenge, if you blow an account and you've been doing it not very long, that's not something to be upset about. Every single football team, and it kind of sounds weird me talking about this because I'm not a football fan, but I'm trying to speak in, in terms where the gentlemen in here, they can, they can draw a parallel to this. It kind of makes it more palatable. But you're doing the same thing by equating the next trading day, the next trade, or this future coming week as it's the be-all, end-all. It's the be-all, end-all that defines whether you are successful or not successful. And then when you are met with short-term adversity, getting stopped out, getting chopped up on a day where you're not really fully equipped, you're not following your model, you're chasing price, you're, you're getting impulsive about, oh, well, you know, this doesn't really look like anything I've ever really trained to take a trade on. But, you know, I got a gut feeling it's probably going to go up here. I just want to make it real easy, strip it down, and it's just going to go for the buy side of the quote. I'll just do that. Why overthink it? Man, make it complicated. And then you lose your ass. And then you'll want to communicate to me either by a direct message on TradingView or you'll send me an email that I'll never get to. Or you'll send something that is very judgmental on yourself in a tweet. And the ladies don't do that. They don't do that. They're wired differently because they know they're more emotional and more sensitive. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a weakness. That's a strength. Men, and I, I was this way too when I was younger, when I lost and when I blew an account, it would just piss me off. And I'd say, okay, I'm pissed off. I'm mad. I'm going to go out there and war against it even harder. Instead of going back to the, what was I trying to trade? Am I trading something that's viable that's going to repeat? Because if it's not there, I'm doing something that's not going to succeed at all. Is it sound logic to do what I'm doing? Think about when a woman gets pregnant. I've, I've used this analogy before, but I know some people are in here the first time hearing this. When you're in a relationship with someone and you decide to either get pregnant or you happen to find yourself pregnant. And as a couple, you know, the guy usually is like, man, <laughs> am I really ready for this? He, he puts it on himself. He's not giving birth. He's not carrying a baby. But all of a sudden, he's thinking inwardly, man, am I ready for this? Am I going to be able to handle this? And what's the first thing the woman's doing? She's nesting. We got to get the house ready. Blah, 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 blah. Like, what the hell just happened? Who are you? Where did you come from? And everything is urgent about making sure things are ready. We have to prepare. What is she doing? What is she doing? She's following a model. The focus is on the model, not inwardly punishing themselves like the male does through fear, judging him. Am I going to be a good father? Am I really ready for this? And some men, sadly, are weak and they run away. They can't stick to the model. They can't stick to it. That's weakness. The female has got all the hard work, the job, the task of letting a human being grow inside of her, getting enough rest, managing the stress so that way she can do what's necessary for her body to grow this individual that will be birthed nine months later. But the male thinks about things in terms of, man, what am I going to be able to do? What am I going to have to deal with? And a weak-minded man runs. They run. They can't, they can't handle it. They can't stick to the task of following the model. The female understands the personal responsibility here. They're a team player. They're the, they're the birthing parent. The husband can only do so much. The work's going to be done predominantly by the, the female. And because they're wired that way, the trading it's not, a, it's not surprising to see how men struggle egotistically, psychologically, more than a female. Because 
if you get down to the brass tacks, men are very, very one-sided. Women are multifunctioning, multitaskers. We, they, can, they can do things that men just aren't quite. But you give a, a man a task of slapping the shit out of somebody that has offended him or his woman or endangered them, now he's in his element. Now he's formidable. You do not want to stand in front of that guy. He's not going to second guess anything. I have a sledgehammer in my hand. I'm about to mow you down. You are now in caveman mode. A female student, I've learned that when I have a new student that comes in, they're female, they're very organized. They're very organized. They're so highly organized, it's impressive. The guys are like, you know, just give me, give me my sledgehammer. Just give me, you know, go ahead and just start breaking shit up. And the only thing that happens is they have discovered that they're not equipped or organized to follow the model. Swinging an axe. It sounds simple, right? Go to there, pick up an axe, hit that piece of uh, tree. But a proper procedure would be hold the axe like this. Don't swing it like that. Wear eye protection. Make sure there's no one around you when you swing it so that we don't hurt anybody. There's a training model in that. Now, usually it's the mom that sees the dad out there swinging the friggin' axe right next to their son who's got headphones on, looking at his phone. He's walking in the striking distance of that axe. And she's in there thinking, this son bitch ain't watching what he's doing. He ain't following the model. He's out there just swinging an axe. What is she doing? She's following the model. Parenting. It takes a great deal of personal responsibility to go into this industry, number one, and you have to be personally responsible and organized and also prepare for adversities. You have to prepare for it. And when, when a woman gets pregnant, she understands there's going to be a whole lot of responsibility and changes, and they have to do things while they can before the baby comes. Your model is much, much like that. And you have to have time getting prepared for that model, getting your house ready for it. And when if you rush out there and try to do things that you're not equipped to do, rushing, trying to make money with something you have not convinced yourself that this model repeats. Losing streaks are gonna happen to everybody. If you have two losing trades before another winning trade, you just had a losing streak. Don't call it anything other than that, because that's exactly what it was. You had a loss, and then you had another win after that. You had a loss. But if you had two consecutive losing trades, you just suffered a losing streak. There's nothing to be ashamed about. That's normal. It's extremely normal in the beginning. But some of you think that that's a knock against your ability to eventually be successful at this. Or that somehow that that's a weakness. Oh, we got to prune that. We can't have that. We can't lose money. Losing a little bit of money, and I just showed this on Friday. Knowing where you do not have the advantage. Letting a loss do its job. Limit how much exposure you have to that risk. Determine by following a model. I have multiple models. You're going to have eventually more than one model too. But in the beginning, it's unrealistic for you to have multiple models that you haven't even done the work to learn how to do one well. All of you are capable of doing this. Some of you are incapable of allowing yourself to develop properly. And losing trades and how you deal with losing trades or losing streaks, the easiest solution to that is understanding your model. How many times have you seen a silver bullet form between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock? A lot, right? How many times have you tried to trade it and did it incorrectly and had a loss, whether it be demo, tape reading, or a live account, or a funded account challenge, and you lost? And then immediately, I guarantee you're thinking, oh, no. I see he's wrong, man. He said it was never going to change. and never going to change the algorithm. Here it is. It's proof. I lost on the trade. I did something wrong. You felt like that, didn't you? Why did you feel that way? Because you haven't been doing enough of the back testing to trust that it's there 
all the time. But you don't have the skill set and the experience to see the right one, the right draw on liquidity. There's days where the economic counter and the market structure implies that even though if there's a high degree of probability that there's going to be a silver bullet between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock in your political time and 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in your political time and 3 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in your political time, there's three setups per day. Even though it's likely the invitation is there for it to manifest itself in the price delivery, does not imply or need, need for you to be in there expecting it to happen for you. That's a gambler's mindset. Knowing that this will repeat, knowing that the model is sound, the logic is based on real fundamental delivery of price, it's going to happen. You will not, you should not, and you cannot get emotional about that loss. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. If you've done the work of back testing and you've seen how many times it's done it, how many times it, you would have seen it and potentially failed, but yet it, the next day or the next trading session, it materializes and there it is. But if you over leveraged and you placed more emphasis on the outcome of that singular trade, because you just got a hundred dollars more and you can get to that funded account, you'll pass your challenge. When you have that small little obstacle and you want to do more than necessary to overcome it. So that way you can get to some feet, some plateau, a funded account. And then you lose it. And you feel like, oh, I should have never done that. Let me hurry up and fix it. And you're jumping in when there's no model there to be entering on. You're impulsively reacting to what price is doing right now after you've taken a loss, whether being squeezed out of the marketplace or actually getting a hard stop hit. At that moment, your brain's going to revert back to what you know. What have you been trained to observe in price? If you've done no backtesting, if, you, if you've collected no journals of these things occurring and growing comfortable with, sometimes you might get it wrong. The model's not incorrect. You are. When I mess it up, I did it wrong. But when you have a loss, you should not go and start imagining the, the end of the world like you have to hurry up and fix this. Lord forbid you go home with a negative drawdown. Lord forbid that can't happen. I mean, we're supposed to be profitable every day. We're supposed to be profitable every trade. That's not practical. You're learning how to do this. In the beginning, you got to give yourself permission to, hey, I'm going to make mistakes. And you want to learn how to make those mistakes safely in the beginning and make lots of them because that's where your learning is going to come. And the mistake of trying to avoid losing or losing streaks only invites more of that. It's, it's a weird paradox. The more you try to avoid taking a loss, the more likely you're going to have them. Why? How could that possibly be like that? Because you're trying to do something psychologically, emotionally, stimuli is, is forcing you to act impulsively instead of following the model. How many silver bullets can form in that one hour? You're looking for one. That's all you're looking for. It's, it's not going to be six of them. It's not going to be a baker's dozen. It's one. And if you missed it or you did it wrong, don't go back in. Let it go. It's going to be real, real hard for the men to do that. But the ladies in my fold, they're like, you know what? I'll just take, read the rest of it. I'll journal it. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. And it's just more experience. Next. No, 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 not the guys. <sighs> you just imagine John Wick, okay? They just lost. They just got stopped out of their trade. That's it. Where's my sledgehammer? I'm going down in the basement. I'm busting my basement's floor up. I'm pulling out another weapon. I'm going to war. <laughs> I've done it. Trust me, I've done all that stuff. And every time I did that, the account got blown. You turn one small little insignificant loss into a comeback story 
that becomes a tragedy. And you do it to yourself. It's very easy to unplug. If you have the data, the resources of collecting these back-tested results, studying a model, sticking to the rules, you're not supposed to be going in there taking multiple entries between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. You're not supposed to be doing that. That's not the model. If you missed it, don't chase it. Let it go. The ladies in my fold, they can do that easily. The men, nope, it's an invitation to a street fight. They're wanting to bring a knife to a gun by, uh, gunfight. That's, that's exactly what they do. And I love them for their tenacity and their willful commitment to go in here and just do battle. But you have to pick and choose your battles, man. You can't go in there expecting your weapon to do what's usually formidable and capable of doing what it's necessary in a silver bullet or whatever model that you're trying to work with. If you've missed that opportunity, the probabilities of you being successful at that moment have shifted to less likely. Not impossible, but less likely. So why would you want to push at that moment where you're now highly sensitive to the fact that you have taken a paper cut? And that's exactly what it should be. Not 10% of your account. Not, well, you know, I lost the max loss on my funded account challenge today. Why? Why? Why are you opening yourself up to that measure of risk? Because you want to get through that funded account challenge fast. Because you think that something magical will happen. You're not going to have losing trades when you get to the uh, funded account. You're going to be scared to death if that's how you feel when you're in the funded account challenge portion of it. When you get to the funded level, you're going to be scared. You won't want to take a trade. And you're going to wait and watch price start moving outside of the entry time when you should have taken it. And then you're going to exit way too soon, too. So you're going to chase price where it's not in a very low probability, I'm sorry, low risk, high probability entry, silver bullet. You're going to wait for what you think is confirmation. The price is going to move. And you're thinking, okay, yeah, it's right. It's, it's definitely going now. It's unmoved eight handles in the S&P. And I could probably eke out four more because it's about ready to go to that buy side. So, yeah, I'm giving up eight, but I'm going to make four. So, you know, <laughs> it's not real money anyway. It's a funded account challenge. If that's how you're thinking, and folks, you need to be real honest with yourself. If that's what you're doing right now, you're not prepared to be trading with a funded account or live money at all. And I know that doesn't feel good to hear that, but that's exactly the medicine you need to take right here, right now. If you're ignoring that, if you're ignoring the fact that you're not prepared, see, my female students, they bring those observations about themselves to me with, with those very things pointing out. So, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking about at the time when I take a loss. This is what I'm considering. Is this right? If it's not right, tell me what I should be doing. The men want to complain to me that it's hard. What's different there? They went out to battle and they got their ass kicked. And they want to be coddled the women understand that they're not going to win every time. But they got to make preparations. Things still got to get done, even if they take a loss. They still have to keep their account. Men think, well, you know, I can respawn. It's only this much money to restart the account. My son did the same thing. That was the mentality. That was his words. It doesn't cost that much to reset it, so I'm just going to try to do it really fast. When that's not doing anything but fostering poor habits. You're inviting difficulty in your trading when you think like that. And what do you think is going to happen over time trading like that? Ill-equipped, you haven't done time back testing, you haven't collected data to support the idea that the model you're trading with or trying to trade with, if you're even following it, what's the sense of even going through learning a model if you're not going to adhere to it? What's the, what's this, what's the whole purpose of even studying certain things, whether it be by me or someone else, if you're not really going to follow the model. I have lots of students, male, that say, I follow this. And I said, okay, show me your trades. Oh, they're real uncomfortable with that because when they show me their trades, they're entering way outside the boundaries of where the trade should be taken. 
what's going on there. They're not following the model. Or they're not good enough to identify it because they haven't spent enough time studying old moves and getting bored with that. Then tape reading it and seeing it repeat. Every, think about why I gave you that model. Why did I give you that model? It's a high-frequency trading model that repeats every single day, three sessions per day. I already know what you're looking for. You want to have experience quickly. You don't want to be waiting on a daily chart setup. You want to learn what it is that you're supposed to know. You want to get out there, do what you have to do, and start making money. I get it, folks. I understand. But there are certain things that you cannot speed through. You can't just rush through it and think that, well, you know, I'll – you know, I'm going to be the exception. You know, I'm, I'm really good at this. You don't understand ICT. You know, I'm, I was made for this. I was built for this. <laughs> when you include money in that, you have now changed the whole dynamic. It's not enough to be right or wrong anymore. Now you have to be right. And if you're wrong, not lose more than it's reasonable. So if you're not going to follow the model, if you're not going to train yourself to see what it is that should be followed and allow the, the data to support the idea that the model sound, you're not going to have the mentality to follow it because you're not going to trust it. You haven't seen it enough. You're familiar with it. Oh, yeah, that's a fair bag. That's easy. They've been around since the 1900s. <laughs> These are people that can't follow a model. You don't want to be that. You want to be someone that says, you know what, I'm treating this like a business. Okay, I don't have time. Things are, things are changing. I want to be ahead of all this stuff. I want to start making money consistently, and I want to be able to weather losing streaks and know that it doesn't mean that the model's broken. It doesn't mean that the algorithm has been canceled and done away with. The markets have now shifted into some kind of unknown randomness. You're going to trust that you, know, you did it wrong. Okay, there's nothing to beat yourself up about. There's another opportunity coming around in a couple more hours. Just sit around and wait for it. Don't rush to get in there and get it back. Don't fear losing because the, the fact of you trying to prevent a loss, you are going to do things that actually invite it. And that will be a repeating loser cycle that you will go through and won't identify it. You'll swear up and down you're following the model. You'll swear up and down that the broker did it to you. That so-and-so did it to me again. Them guys did it to us guys when you just didn't do it right. That's all. And mental health is managed, and <laughs> I understand I'm bipolar, and this is going to be you know, something of a, a rich topic to touch on, but I think I'm equipped to do so. I wrestle with a lot of that kind of stuff, and it's very hard for me to focus. I have to imagine my son being in front of me when I'm talking like this, because when I allow myself to think about how many people are actually listening, it messes me up. Doesn't sound like that, does it? But that's the truth. Your mental health as a trader needs to be guarded. You got to keep all the bullshit out. No negative. Don't give these jokers on the internet time to give you any kind of second guessing or doubting of what it is that you're doing or inspire you to want to go out there and bring them evidence. Fuck these people. They, they're broke. They want to see if they can get a rise out of you. And if they can, they own you. For that moment, they own you. Who's in control of yourself at that moment? They are. So you want to be guarding your mental health. And the way you keep yourself on the right road in progress is by following the model that you've back-tested, that you have seen sometimes it doesn't work well in your hands, and that's okay. You ever had a car accident? Did you ever hit a manhole? You ever hit a curb with your tires? What happened? Something cost money, right? Did you stop wanting to drive a car because you did that? No. That's the same thing that you need to treat your trading with. You need to look at your losses if you cannot make – let me make sure I say this correctly because the focus is you're, you're starting to learn how to do this. So you don't really have a baseline yet. 
you need to determine what you can realistically make. Well, I've given you a target, which is five handles. It's a very low hanging fruit. It's very easy to get to. Admittedly, for someone new, it doesn't feel so easy, does it? But over time, you'll get there. It's easy. And then it'll grow exponentially beyond that. But if you're trading one micro, not many, micro, what are you really risking if you risk five handles to make five? 25 bucks. Man, I don't got time for the 25 bucks thing, ICT. Well, then I can't help you. Because what you're saying is, is you don't want to condition your, your mind to follow a model. Because if you can do that very, very well, what do you think is happening when you apply it to one mini? And then eventually five minis, 10, 15. <laughs> You're not equipped to appreciate the level of focus that's required for you to trust the model, not looking at the money. The ladies in my fold, they do it right. They go from the lowest potential risk, the leverage that they can use the least of. They work with that until it becomes so easy for them to stick to the model. They don't care about the money because they're following the model. They use the aspects of money management and proper risk management. That means my better traders only risk half of what they know they can make every single day easily. What? Mm -hmm. Let's assume for a moment that it's very easy for them to go out and get 10 handles in the S&P on one mini. It's $500. Never let your loss be more than 250 bucks because it's easy for you to recoup that if you're going to trade another session and you're going to be able to do it with half the leverage. You don't think about it like that, do you? You think about, well, I took a loss. Let me just double up because it's only got to move just a little bit now. I can get it back and get even. Or I might get lucky and it might run. Are you sticking to your model? Nope. You're trading impulsively. You're gambling. You're doing a scratch off. That's a scratch off trader mentality. I'm going to spend a buck. I might win 500 bucks. Yeah, or you could have wasted a dollar, the gas money to go there, and the time even doing all that nonsense. Your mental health is rewarded by following a model that you've investigated, you've tested, back-tested, collected data on. Your management of losing trades improves over time because you know that losing trades are going to happen, and you can't avoid every single one of them. It's not going to happen. There is no way to possibly avoid every single one of them. And when you have a model and you have a loss, you reflect on the market internals at the time that you took that loss. And this, if everything is still there and the trade's still viable, okay, go in with half the leverage or don't do anything at all. But don't plow in there with the same amount of leverage or chase it looking for confirmation because you're not following the model. You're trading your P&L. And trading your P&L is a loser's game. You're trading the ebb and flow of your equity curve. Losers do that. Every person on that leaderboard that ever makes it that way on the Robin's Cup, that's what they do. They trade their P&L equity curve. And that's why they go up and down, they up and down, and they fall off, and you never see them again. It's a wonderful psychological study of watching that every year. And you're doing the same thing many times in your funded account challenges or when you get your funded account, then you just can't wait to get a big win. And you use the maximum leverage because, hey, you know, I got through that funded account challenge pretty easy. It didn't take me any time at all. Over leverage, I understand, but it's cheap. If I would have failed, I could have just paid for it a reset. You have to treat that account like it was your money. All of it, not just the reset, all of it. Are you doing that? I would humbly submit that probably less than 5% of you do it like that. And that's what you're doing that makes you ill-equipped to be successful. You're not being 
responsible with the risk. And you're not being responsible with the money management aspects. The female trader sits in my fold, treat it like that. Males don't. Sledgehammer, swing, bust it up, take it home. Big payout. Caveman language. The ladies in my fold, I want to be scientific about this. I want to measure the risks. I want to stay within a risk parameter that I know I'm comfortable with. And if I take a loss, it's okay. I have a model I'm going to trust tomorrow or the next session. Nothing changes. The men would do well to learn from successful women traders. But little dick energy prevents that. I don't want to learn from a woman. <laughs> if that woman's making more money than you are and more consistent when trading, why wouldn't you? You'd be a fool not to. But society says that, you know, women are beneath men. No. They're, they're under the arm in the companionship of a male. Together, they're strong, real strong. That's why they're designed to be that way, a partnership. You lean on each other's strengths. The woman usually relies on the capability of the male to defend the home and the family. That's their strength. Usually, the female is good at keeping the home and, and keeping things organized. So that way, the male doesn't have to worry about that. Men are generally really good risk takers. That's not a strength. That means they can over leverage and feel no fear about it. Look at extramarital affairs <laughs> as a testimony to it. And the women, they're historically better risk managers. As a community, I would love for you all, and I see it today, but the ones that are in the offing outside saying, oh, you know, the women this and the women that, and guys are always better than men, uh, women in, in trading. No, they're not. And I have data to support that. <laughs> Got a lot of students, and I can tell you the best ones are the females. And I'm proud to say that. Because I have science behind me when I was going into this teaching venue that I expected the females to, to stand apart. And you can say, well, look, you know, the people that win competitions are usually men. I'm not saying that they're not willing to take exorbitant risks and they may get lucky and it may pan out for them. That's not equivalent to skill. What did you just say? You heard what the fuck I just said. You heard it. That's equivalent to a guy going out on a weekend and having an affair and getting away with it. Does that make him a good husband? <laughs> no. Makes him a piece of shit that got away with it, but he keeps doing it. Eventually it's going to come home to roost. And mama ain't going to be real happy about that. You're going to come home with something and leave without it. And stop all thinking I'll help that. <laughs> so I've listened to all of you today. And again, it's just, it's really nice to hear the back and forth interactions of everybody and how you deal with certain things and how you've come up. And maybe I don't have a voice in the conversation that was had today. Maybe I don't have a, an opinion that really holds much weight here in some of your eyes and think that, you know, who are you to talk like this? I've seen the lives of many people change for the good and the bad when they got involved in trading. And the results are going to be determined by the amount of Organization, adherence to impeccable risk management. See, the males, they want to be that sniper. They want to be extremely precise because that, that's equivalent to having, well, size. 
in a man's mind. They think like that. If I can get in with the least amount of drawdown on my entry and get the highest exit strategy implemented, or I'm getting the maximum amount of the move, then I'm alpha. Women ain't thinking about that. Women saying, hey, <laughs> I'm going to trust my model to pay me, and I'm going to do all the heavy lifting through money management. All I got to do is have a cookie cutter. And if I apply sound money management, that same little trade, five dollars per point and five handles, risking five handles, one for one, I can turn that into whatever I want it to be. Think about it. My grandmother had one cookie cutter, a snowman. As long as she had dough, there's no limit to how many cookies as long as that dough re remained. When she ran out of dough, that's it. Gotta get, gotta get more money. Your model is that cookie cutter. You have to keep this dough in the account. You do that, it'll, it'll multiply. You'll have more than just one cut of that snowman for a cookie. It'll repeat and it'll be exponential in its delivery in the results. But it will not happen because of luck on a consistent basis, it's not going to come to you by way of shortcutting the, the growing pains that you're trying to avoid. It's by you embracing it and saying, yeah, I'm willing to submit to this because I know it's worthwhile. And if I have a losing trade, if I have a series of losing trades, I'm not going to lose sight of what it is I'm trying to do. That means there's opportunity for me to improve upon what did I do wrong there? And I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm going to, I'm going to, Go into the data and say, okay, this is what I should have done, and now I'm going to learn from that. Not beat yourself up about it. And over time, in closing, you will have learned to trust the model that you can use and implement at your disposal. You can go in there and any, any given day, trade it, and not have any fear of the results, but expecting – what you have proven to yourself already, that it works, that it does pay out if you follow the model. But if you do anything outside the model, the results are garbage. That's the mindset you should have. Your mental health needs to be focused on, am I trading the model? Am I following the rules? Am I keeping risk at bay? Because in the beginning, that's what it's all about. It's not about making a lot of money. It's about being able to be profitable and lose very little and being comfortable like that. And over time, your losses become more infrequent, more, more upside in terms of profitability is available to you because you've done everything that's correct and you've guarded your mental health by not allowing anybody to talk you out of what it is you're doing. Because life in itself will, will the stars will align, and you'll have a day where you have a losing trade. And at the time, it wasn't that much of a, a loss. But then you're going to invite the opportunity for someone that doesn't give a shit about you to give you their two cents, their opinion about what you did. And they don't have to trade. They can't make money. They have no idea. They're going to tell you, man, you sure you want to be doing that? And now what did you just do? You invited something that you're going to hem and haul over, thinking and worry about. You know, Am I really equipped for this? What did I really do today? It really sucks. This person knows this about me. I wish I never would have said it. What are you doing? You're spending mental capital. Is that good for your mental health or no? No. Profitable traders don't give a fuck what other people think about what they're doing. They don't care. They're not inviting other people into a conversation about their finances. They're not inviting them to tell them how to trade their model better or what they should be doing differently. That's someone that doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Would you feel confident going in to see your surgeon on the surgery day and they turn over and they say, hey, listen, um, do you think I should do it this way to a person that's not dressed like a doctor? <laughs> that wouldn't inspire confidence, would it? No, it wouldn't. But that's what you're doing. You're the surgeon in this. And you're taking the investment advice from Carl, the temp. He doesn't even have a full-time position yet. 
at your job. He's just working in a cubicle doing bullshit work. And you're letting him tell you what you should be doing or having the influence that he gives on your outcome of a trade. That's the equivalent. That's exactly what it is. It's silly, I know. But that's exactly what you're doing. And I love the fact that this community guards everyone's mindset and keeps everybody on the, on the right path. That's exactly how you use social media. You have to have a, like, you have to have a hive mentality. And people want to call it a cult. Fuck them. They're broke. They're going to be in the same position or worse two years from now. You won't. You're, you're, you're going to be somewhere better. Because what you're doing is, is you're keeping yourself around other people that are positive. You're not hanging around the toxic people. It's draining. You're upbeat about it. You feel good. And you're doing it on a fucking day that you can't even trade. I mean, I guess you can in a little while. But right now, you're all hanging out on the weekend. When everybody else is out there trying to get drunk, eating fucking potato chips, pork rinds, getting fat, not exercising, and doing everything else about life that isn't correct for living a very successful, healthy lifestyle. What are all you doing? You're hanging around people that want to be winners. You're hanging around people that are aspiring to do the same thing you're doing. That's the right way to do it. Because if you hang around shit, you're going to start smelling like it. Who's a, who in your friend's circle are negative? Who in your family do you avoid at all functions? That's what this community keeps out. And that's fucking awesome. It's not weakness. It's strength. When bullshit comes in, bullshit gets booted. See, there's a, a honeybee. They're pretty, uh, pretty good together. They, they work real well. They collect honey and you know, produce honey, rather gathering all the nectar and such, but there's a wasp that comes in and can really do a lot of damage to them. Cut them all up real quick. But these honeybees, when they get an intruder like that and it comes into the hive, they all mount around it and they call it a murder ball. And while they can't physically pierce that larger bee and do any kind of damage with it, the fact that they group around it they swarm it, and they shake themselves violently, and they raise the temperature up, and they basically microwave it and cook it. That's what this community does. When an asshole comes in here, they produce a murder ball around it, and they can't stay. They die. You have to guard your mental health. You can't let assholes in. You can't let shit come in. You put shit in, you get shit out. You're trying to learn how to do the most difficult thing in the world against the most smartest individuals and shrewdest, corrupted motherfuckers that ever walked in the planet. And you're doing it in their backyard. You think you're going to have some adversities? Yeah, of course you're going to have adversities. But there's advantages that you have to learn to wait for and take them when they're there and avoid it when the probabilities are low. Pick your shots, caveman. So anyway, I've taken enough of your time. I've enjoyed everyone's input today, and I look forward to the next one you guys do.